Hi, I'm Eileen. I'm an occupational therapist. My business is Bega. This is volume two of Eileen's OT Pet Peeves because I could go on and on and it's not going to fit on one or you'll be bored out of your socks. All right, now we're on to the fourth one. And this one I call fake dressing. I saw this yesterday also. All right, you wheel the person down to the clinic and you hand them a shirt and you say, the shirt is really big, I wanna see you get it on. Okay, now what they're trying to accomplish, and, I, and this is great, is trying to help the person learn how to put a shirt on because when they go home or whatever, they're gonna to have to put a shirt on. Or a lot of times they do this to teach them how to use tools to get their pants on. The problem is somebody out there on the floor just dress them. So when it happened for real life, somebody else just did it for them. Now they come to the clinic and they do it for fake. Um, I mean, there's a little teeny bit of worth in that. But if you throw some dementia on that fire, they're completely confused. Why am I, why am I doing this? I already have pants on. It, it's just... It's just a lot better just to go down and catch them in the morning and help them get their pants on for real. All right, the next one, um, which is number five, is the Claudia Allen leather lacing. Nothing personal about Claudia Allen and her cognitive scales are really nice and everything, but a lot of, there was a big push for a time being to do cognitive testing using the leather lacing which is a little test where you see in time how they let do all that. And, and that's fine, but if you're working in a nursing home, probably the person that you are evaluating didn't even get to brush their teeth. They probably didn't get to comb their hair. So it seems pretty pointless to me to wheel them down there, unwashed, unbrushed, to, to practice their fine motor and cognitive skills on a little art piece when you can just have them brush their teeth and get the same thing. And then at the end of it, they're gonna have clean teeth and they're gonna be happier. You've provided a service in their everyday life. They feel better. It's functional, a big OT word. And you get the same information. All right. The, um, here's another OT thing I hear a lot. I don't wanna do ADLs because all every day because I'm not a CNA. I get that you're not a CNA and an OT just can't go in there and do dressing. And it's very true that if you get in the habit to be helpful, and a lot of CNAs, which I love CNAs, and, and they're, they're, I don't even blame them for this, they do sometimes take advantage and try to have you get their people up all the time. But the point is, if you have a patient and they can't get out of bed and they can't get dressed and they can't to the, get to the toilet, Oh, it's the sense of taking them down to the clinic and doing anything else. That's the most important thing in their whole life. They have to be able to get dressed. They have to be able to get on the crapper. They have to do these things. If they can't do it, what what else other goals are you going to have? You're going to make their hands stronger so they can brush their teeth? Why don't you just go brush their teeth and then do that? And then after you do all those things, then, you know, if you still have time, come on down to the clinic and, and work on their weaknesses. But... You're not being a CNA because everything you do is skilled. You're not just combing their hair. You're not just brushing their teeth. You're not doing it. If they really do need that, then you need to find something else that they need to work on because they're not, they're not there. And in which case, that doesn't mean you don't still do their ADLs. You do, part, you do their hair. You do the part that they can do. Okay? Maybe they need to sit on the side of the bed so they can get out. Maybe they need to be able to reach the sink. Just whatever it is. But... Working on ADLs is, is never just being a CNA. It's the very meaning of your whole career. All right. This is another one, the uh, I'm too tired for OT bit. A lot of times people have dialysis or they're tired and they don't want to do therapy. Well, I kind of understand for physical therapy because that's exercise, but OT doesn't have to be exercise. OT is life. So how can you be too tired for your own life? So if somebody comes back from dialysis and they're all whooped out, uh, they might still have to go to the bathroom. They might still have to get in their wheelchair to eat their meal. They might still have to eat their meal. So whatever is the little piece of life that they need to be working on, that's your OT. So you really can't be too tired for OT because OT is your life. And also, 
when you're tired, that's when you need to practice being safe the most because that's when it gets you. Therapy is not for when you're strong. Therapy is for when you're weak. Um, okay, well, that's round two. And I thank you for listening.